Okay, things are really moving along. Now we are really getting to the home stretch. A couple things that I've done here. I routed my saddle slot as I said I would, and I also went ahead and reamed out my bridge pin holes to fit the bridge pins using a little three degree reamer that I have right here. Okay, and you're gonna either need a three degree reamer or a five degree reamer, depending on whether you have three degree pins or five degree pins. What's the difference between three degree pins or five degree pins? The hell if I know. <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, it could just be two different standards that have existed over time. I've actually always kind of wondered that. I don't think there's any sort of, you know, sonic justification one way or the other. It just wouldn't make sense that there would be. So yeah, just make sure your reamer matches the taper of your pins. Another thing I did was put this lovely little chamfer on each bridge pin hole using a special countersinking bit that has a little stopper on it so that each one of these holes ends up being the same depth, right? It's very important. And also shaped and fitted, well, I didn't shape yet, I'm sorry. I fitted my saddle, which simply means I thicknessed it until it just, check this out. You hear that creaking sound? It just creaks into place, just like with the nut. So now, see how I can pick up the guitar by the nut? I can also pick it up by the saddle. Pretty cool. Hey, I can pick up both ends. Look at that. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm getting delirious here. <laughs> this has been a lot of nonstop work here. It's fun though. So now what I have to do is shape this saddle. We're gonna put the radius of the fretboard, 20 inch radius onto this saddle. And we're gonna set the height of it. And then we're also going to crown the saddle. So first I'm just gonna trace a line across like this and then i want to know where the center of my string splay is here so if i mark the center between my d and g string and pull that mark up towards the top here and then place my saddle back in there make sure it's butted all the way up and then i can mark right onto the saddle where the center of my string splay is now the reason I did it that way is because obviously my saddle, as you can tell, is a lot longer on the base side than just uh, the span of the strings there. And I'm not gonna get into that here. Um, a couple of you guys, a lot of you guys have been asking me sort of endlessly about that. And um, I'm gonna address it in the Q&A. It's honestly not that interesting, but it's, it's a bit to explain the reason why I do that. It's more than just, you know, a unique look. So now from this center point, I'm going to measure up a predetermined amount that I always do, which is really just a rough number. I'm gonna measure up 9 64ths and then draw my radius there. What is that 9 64ths for? It's just to give us a rough starting saddle height, meaning a high saddle height from which we can later work our way down to an appropriate saddle action. Okay, make my mark at about 9 64ths for my rough starting height and then trace my radius and most people like to tip their radius just slightly towards the treble and so that's what I'm doing here which just gives you slightly lower action on the treble side. All right, so now all of this stuff up here, that's waste, I'm gonna carve that away. Okay, now let's go ahead and crown the saddle. I'm gonna run some graphite all over the top here. That is not in there tight. <laughs> there we go. And then I'm just gonna carve this and push that black line until it's just a thin line right down the center. Now, in the end, I'm only gonna do this for 
like about a minute really or 30 seconds just because I want to push that in just a little bit so I can fit this fret crowning file over it. Ideally I could just take this fret crowning file and crown it just like that but it's because this is made for frets and this is a sort of wide saddle it's an eighth of an inch wide I can't fit this on there until I tuck in these edges just a little bit okay but this fret crowning file will give me a nice consistent crown across the whole saddle As part of my setup later on, by the way, I am actually going to individually intonate each string. But just as part of my procedure here, getting started, I just crown the whole thing. Although most guitars really do just have a uncompensated saddle. Or I shouldn't say it's uncompensated because it is located on the guitar in a way that's appropriate for compensation. It's just what's considered a straight saddle. So it doesn't have perfect intonation points because the perfect intonation points would be kind of zigzagging. It is just giving you, that straight saddle is giving you the best straight line running between all those points. And, you know, the market, meaning musicians themselves, have kind of shown over time that they're fine with that, largely. So the fully compensated saddle is almost more of a psychological thing. Because honestly, if I play a guitar that has a straight saddle or a fully compensated saddle, while I'm playing the guitar, I don't, I don't notice at all. I'm not thinking about that. I'm just enjoying the guitar. Okay, now I can probably fit that fret crowning file over there. Yep. So now I'll just crown it the rest of the way with the file. So the saddle's looking good right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut the string ramps, uh, which by the way is not a entirely necessary thing. If you're using slotted bridge pins, then you don't need the string ramps. However, I like to, sometimes I use slotted bridge pins. I use those on the student guitars and they're fine. But what I really like to do is use unslotted bridge pins and then put those ramps into the bridge itself. That just seats the ball ends of the strings firmly against the bridge plate and not on the, putting any sort of leverage onto the bridge pin itself. A whole nother discussion, really. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those ramps in here. I'm really trying to work quickly now at this point, so I'm not gonna film any of that. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And also I'm not gonna film, but I'm gonna go ahead and slot the nut. And then you'll see me stringing this thing up. And uh, after that, you know, it's finish time once I, you know, am happy with everything on the body and there isn't anything to clean up, of course, then, hey, it's finish time. We're getting there. We're going to make it. All right. I'm going to get to work. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.